Your future contains dry bones. Your slow demise begins right when you hold the queen in the palm of one hand. Beware the bird, for it will betray you. And from that, there's no coming back. But daughters are the key to justice. Find the right one and keep her close. All signs point to your murder. Hey y'all, it's Kate from The Litter Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. This is book one in the Castle No Files series, which I only just found out it was book one in his series when I was preparing for this video, but that's great news because I love this book so much and I wanted more of this town. So I'm so excited that we're going to get more. I got the arc for this book from NetGalley to review. This book comes out on March 26th. So today, the day that you're seeing this, the book is out. So if you like what you hear in this spoiler free review, Go and pick it up because it is such a good time. So first, our spoiler-free summary. This is advertised as for fans of the Knives Out movie and the book The Thursday Murder Club. And that is absolutely spot on. I am a fan of both of those and I loved it. We've got two different timelines going on here in this book. Our present day timeline, we're with Annie Adams and she's been summoned to her great aunt's sprawling estate to discuss her will. But when Annie arrives with the other members of the party that's going to be discussing this will, great aunt Frances is already dead and she leaves stipulations in her will that Annie and another character that we have here, they have to try, they have to solve this murder, who murdered great aunt Frances and whoever can solve the murder in a week gets the entire inheritance. But if the cops, the detective solves it before either of these two, then it goes to a real estate developer and they'll split it up and essentially ruin this historic part of town. And also if they can't do it in just a week, then it goes to this realtor automatically also. This is all discussed within like the first couple chapters. So I don't think it's spoiler because majority of the book, at least like 80% of the book is trying to figure out this murder. We get our second timeline through Annie reading great aunt Francis's old journals from when she was a teenage going on up to adult. It starts in 1965. Frances is a teenager and she gets her fortune told about a future murder, her murder. And she spends the rest of her life trying to figure out who's going to be the murderer and how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. She spends her whole life out trying to figure out this murder. I gave this one five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book. It was a, such a fun book. So in our call pile breakdown, for characters, I gave this an eight out of 10. They were strong characters, but there were a lot of them and there were times when my brain got some of them mixed up, but that didn't last very long because of um, parents' writing style. Atmosphere and setting, I gave a 9.5. I thought it was absolutely perfect. This small um, British town with the sprawling estate that both gave our character room to explore but it also gave us a home base to go back to i loved it all the atmos the atmosphere of this small town where everyone knew each other and but also everyone kind of begrudged great aunt francis in their own ways for different reasons which set them all up to be suspects of this murder at one point or another the writing style i gave a nine out of ten it was easy to read it was engaging and engrossing trying to solve this murder and figure out who the murderer was. I was explaining to John what I was reading and he was trying to solve it at the same time with only getting limited clues because if I told him everything, that would basically just be reading the books to him and we didn't have time for that. Plot, I gave a 10 out of 10. Perrin is the queen of plot twists. Every time I thought I was getting close to figuring it out, something else would happen or be revealed and that would have me going back to square one. It was so, so much fun. 
intrigue i gave a nine out of ten i was intrigued this whole time i had to find out who did it and why they did it and how they managed to do it it felt like perrin took the you know classic board game clue and wrote out a clue novel but with her own spins on it it was just absolutely fantastic logic and relationships i gave a seven and a half out of ten logic yes that was there all the way but the relationships it felt a little lacking to me. Some felt a little bit forced. I wanted a little bit more exploration in them, but it did not stop me from enjoying this book at all. I gave enjoyment 10 out of 10. I loved everything about this book. It was just so much fun. You didn't know who to trust or who was the killer. Every person you met along the way could have either been the person that helped you solve the murder or the killer or both um, at certain times. And it was just so much fun. My compile total score was a 63. You divide that by seven, you get a nine and that gives you just barely a five out of five stars. I love this book so much. If you are looking for a good murder mystery that will keep you thinking, keep you trying to solve the murders, page after page after page, even when you think you have it all figured out, there's something else that comes along. Highly recommend How to Solve Your Own Murder by Christian Parent. Comes out today, March 26th, so go check it out. If this sounded at all interested to you, then I highly recommend How to Solve Your Own Murder. If you were lucky enough to read the arc of this or you're watching this review after you've read the book, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of it? Who did you think was the murderer? And who is your favorite character in this whole thing? I absolutely loved it. I had these images set in my mind of all these different actors that could play the characters and I think it would be a fantastic adaptation to a movie. As always, keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.